Welcome to our purpose leak and follow us to discover the odyssey of the interferon gamma receptor. As you know, many receptors are present at the surface of a cell. These receptors are required for the transduction of signal from the cell surface, and a long-standing question is to understand the special temporal regulation of signal transduction. A few years ago, we could show that interferon gamma signaling was initiated at the plasma membrane. In other words, you do not need endocytosis of an interferon gamma receptor to transduce interferon gamma signaling, that is, JAK-STAT signaling. In this context, a point mutation was identified on the second chain of the interferon gamma receptors, and kids with this mutation do not respond to interferon gamma, and they suffer from life-threatening infection by atypical mycobacteria. In fact, the interferon gamma receptor of these kids has a mutation which creates an N-glycosylation site. This leads to the addition of a new glycan chain to the receptor. In patient cells, we found that interferon gamma stimulation was enabled to activate JAK-STAT signaling. To understand the difference between the wild type and the mutant form of the interferon gamma receptor, we looked at their diffusion dynamics at the plasma membrane. For this, we used SVFCS, a powerful technique we previously developed in our team. With it, we can distinguish between three kinds of diffusions. The free diffusion, the dynamic partitioning into membrane domains, and trapping by the actin cytoskeleton meshwork. So we have been studying the diffusion of the interferon gamma receptor, and we have shown that the, this receptor is confined into lipid-dependent domains, but to our surprise, the mutating form of this receptor is confined in actin-dependent domains. So we wanted to know what can drive mutated interferon gamma receptor to the wrong domain. We found that this receptor is bound to galactins, which are proteins that recognize specific sugar in glycan chains. When we remove galactins, we observe that the mutated interferon gamma receptor then goes back in the proper lipid nanodomains and jacks that signaling can be restored. To link changes of receptor diffusion and the defects of signaling that we observe with the mutant receptor, we decided to look at conformational changes. We showed that drugs that affect lipid domains completely blocked conformational changes and signaling. On the contrary, actin cytoskeleton inhibition had no effect. It means that the receptor lipidic environment is necessary for the correct conformational change upon interferon gamma stimulation. Moreover, when we added exogenous galactins on the wild-type receptor, the conformational changes induced by interferon were blocked. FCS, right, biochemistry, have allowed us to uncover the mechanism by which a gain of glycosylation genetic disorder inactivates interferon gamma receptor signaling. Altogether, we have revealed here a new function for galactins in the regulation of JAK-STAT signaling and established a key role of nanodomain partitioning in the bioactivity of transmembrane receptors in vivo.